Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. Tonight, I was a little bit of a stretch to find out exactly what I was going to put on here. And that was more so because I have been tired. I haven't slept much in the last day. There was no podcast this morning because my daughter's 21st birthday was Monday. So I took her to dinner yesterday because I, she was finally off of work and I could finally do it with everything that's been going on. But I was thinking about this after watching one of Mr. Guns and Gears where he talks about the four rules and why they're kind of crap. Check out his video. He has no good solid point. But I was thinking about flagging and how irresponsible you see people in gun stores. Um, it's a good exercise in telling a noob a new person to the gun world as if they flag you. Let me define what flagging is. By pushing the bl the muzzle of the gun or waving it in any way, fashion, or form towards someone or at them, it's considered rude, for one. For two, Mr. Guns and Gear made this point, and I think he hit the nail on the head is that you need to be checking every gun regardless of what it is before you even worry about the other four. Um, if someone hands you a gun, that should be the very first thing you check. Uh, why? There's people that are so out of it in today's world, they don't realize what they've done. I've seen people on the shooting range have... Uh, load their gun, load a pistol specifically, forget that they chambered around, go to shoot, get ready to, to kick the round out, and squeeze the trigger at the same time causing the gun to go off and have an accidental discharge. I myself have had an accidental discharge um, while working on a firearm. So... That's my own dumbass fault for not checking the weapon that someone else brought me. Which leads me to the, what I'm bringing to you. Is to check every weapon. Drop the magazine. Do a physical check. My daddy always said, stick your thumb or your finger, your pinky, in the chamber. That's doable on most guns. Or you can visually check it if you don't want to get your finger dirty. But it, it is a damn sure way... To verify that a gun is 100% empty. And if you look at the stupid things, like from Brandon Herrera's Darwin Awards, um, there's a viral video going around of a little girl uh, with a pistol and she's trying to show her gangster moves to some music. And she didn't know the gun was loaded. She squeezes the trigger and it goes off right by her head. Gives her a powder burn on her forehead. She's damn lucky she didn't kill herself. And if, if she just got the powder burn, she's lucky in a hole in the wall or the ceiling. Now, in an apartment complex, that's where it becomes even more of an issue. Uh, because if it goes through a wall, there's a potential for you to hurt someone. Okay. In my case, my accident will discharge. I'm very lucky my daughter wasn't home. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but I've learned my lesson now. Uh, this particular case, this gun was jammed, and they couldn't get said round out. They didn't bother to tell me that the round was still live. Because then they would have set an a uh, hell of a lot more different set of precautions in place. So I'm lucky no one got hurt, including myself. Other than scared to death, and I had to patch a hole in the drywall. <laughs> so don't be stupid like me that's where I'm going with this learn the rules if you're a new guy or a new lady and you're wanting to get into shooting don't flag a gun or flag someone with a muzzle of a gun if you don't know what the muzzle of a gun is find you a, met a mentor immediately that can help you um, the muzzle of a gun is the front end of the gun it's where the bullet comes out it's the batty spot, the shooty part that hurts you. If we start 
doing what we're supposed to all the time and act as responsible gun owners, maybe we'll get a better reputation. Maybe we'll get a better leg up. That's some of the good that the NRA had done. The NRA nowadays is a show corporation. I would say become a gun owners of America guy. That's what I did, but I don't support the NRA because they're kind of, well, they're kind of backsiding. They were partially responsible for the red flag laws that were passed. They were also partially responsible for passing the bump stock ban. Um, Trump's advisors went directly to the NRA to get something that they could put on there, kind of as a token. Anyone who's in the 2A knows that you give them an inch, they'll take a mile, and you'll never get it back. Case in point, the bump stock. Now they're going after pistol braces. The absolute best thing we could do is vote for right now. If it comes to the time where they're starting to kick down doors and take guns, it will be the end of the republic. People in power know that. And if they keep pushing, which they're getting more and more likely to do, they're going to end up with repercussions. They're going to find someone that is not in their right mind and is going to do something stupid. Right now, the best thing you can do is talk to your people, rally your friends to go vote. I say that as an ANCAP. This is one of the few times I'm saying, try it and let's see. Because we got this one and the next one that are going to be the biggest ones that, of our life. And I really do believe that because I didn't think 2020 would shake out the way it had. And now, two years into who won, I don't know that I want that ever to happen again. So, yeah, I, I've always said, vote your heart, vote your wallet, vote your conscience. I'm still saying that. But damn it, we need to get more active because we can still lose this by a healthy margin. Remember, all the media sources are against us. And the best thing we can do is be the best representatives of the Second Amendment out there. And the best stewards of it. That means owning the tools. Maintaining the tools, training with the tools, knowing everything you can about it. This is a passion and a lifelong dream for me, is to just be a gun guy all the time. I looked at being a gunsmith when I was younger. My dad actually paid for a gunsmithing school uh, that a really good gunsmith that was here in town went to. But it went under before I could attend. Then I floated for a while just trying to figure out who the hell I was and what the hell I was going to do. Became an IT guy with a strong background in the Second Amendment. I'm a collector. I'm a fan. And there is a time and a place for a gun. But there's also a time and a place for a pen. There's also a time and a place for... For you to stand on a soapbox. We're still at the soapbox stage. Don't give an inch. And don't let them think you're done fighting. Like, share, subscribe, be great.